Here we are with the Mendocino uh, Film Festival. Uh, I want to introduce to you uh, Misha Hedges, uh, a local filmmaker whose film Out of the Sea will show today at 12, no, show Saturday, 12.30 in the festival tent. So we're lucky to have him with us today. Uh, and the, one of the questions I have for you, Misha, is what provoked you to make this film? Yeah. Um, well, my co-producer. Um, okay. I met her at a conference uh, about sustainability. Um, I have a company that helps uh, nonprofits and progressive businesses with storytelling. And I met her there, and she had this idea to create a museum exhibit about commercial fishermen. And uh, from there, we started talking about doing some short videos, and the whole thing kind of snowballed into a 75-minute feature film. Wow, amazing. <laughs> well, could you um, talk a little bit about your uh, local Mendocino history, please? Yeah, um, we moved here when I was two. Um, I, I grew up here. I went to. Um, the Greenhouse School up in Casper Little Lake, and I um, and, uh, went to Mendocino High School. And Mendocino High School was really where I started making films with Tom Wolski, who was a video uh, production teacher there. And really what drew me to documentary films was that experience in my... I was 16 or 17, and that was right when the Big River purchase was happening. Oh. And we made a little student film that went along with the fundraising efforts. And I saw them raise $25 million with the help of some of the materials and the film that we created. And it just showed me as a 16-year-old, media can create change. Exactly. And that's what uh, kind of drew me into documentary and why I'm still doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you traveled up and down the California coast. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about the people you encountered. Mm -hmm. I mean, how were the fishermen? I mean, were people generally receptive to you? And, yeah. and how did you choose the people that you chose? Right. And you have such a wide variety of, yeah. of, of fishing types. Right, right. Very cool. Yeah, so we tried to um, get away from just the, the standard kind of fish that everyone knows about. I mean, we did shoot a salmon story, but you know, salmon, swordfish, tuna, those are all amazing fisheries. But we wanted to kind of show some of the other species that mm -hmm. are caught in California yeah right under our noses that are getting exported to other countries who have a bigger appetite for them. And that's a, a main theme in the film, is this kind of fish swap that's, that's, that we do here in this country because of our particular tastes and um, budget for seafood. Right, right. Um, so in terms of who was receptive, um, I mean, the people who are in the film are the people who are receptive to us. Exactly. But, uh, you know, um, there's Did you get some, turned away by anybody? Do they say, "Hey, I don't want, I don't want you guys," or you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there, there's a lot of um, they've faced enormous challenges, fishermen. Um, everything from uh, you know dockside real estate going values going up and pushing out small fishing businesses and and literally spaces to put fishing boats because if yachts pay more more for a slip fee, the fishing boats get pushed out. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there's some spots reserved for fishermen, but um, they've faced enormous challenges, and so a lot of fishermen, um, some of the fishermen we talked to were a little bit wary of having their stories shown, as any documentary subject should be wary of a filmmaker of course, coming and saying, of I'd like to tell your story, because they, they don't know how. But uh, all of the people who, we, who ended up in the film um, uh, were just so great to work with and so open and welcoming, and really taking a little bit of a risk having uh, a film crew on their boat, which fishing boats are inherently dangerous. I was going to ask about that. What was, what was the most dangerous encounter that you had? I don't think we had any dangerous encounters. Oh. It's more just staying out of the way of mm -hmm. all the heavy equipment. Um, it's Nobody got seasick? I got seasick. <laughs> Justin, uh, who's one of the cinematographers who worked on it, did not. He's, he's, uh, has his sea legs, but uh, I and the other cinematographer, mm -hmm. Sasha, were just pretty much constantly green. Oh, uh, <laughs> and there's really r nothing, I think, worse than being seasick, because you can't get past it till you get on the land. Yeah, you know? yeah. well, well especially like, when you're staring at a little uh, LCD oh. screen on your, on your camera. <laughs> and there's squid every place. <laughs> and there's squid and diesel and the, the diesel, guts yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I really <laughs> love the variety that you covered, and it surprised me, and I, I like the, that you show how little of our of our mm -hmm. fish on the California coast that we actually keep and eat. That was a, that was a, a mind blower for me. Mm -hmm. um, what were what were some of the other challenges as a filmmaker? Obviously, uh, you know, staying present. Yeah, yeah, staying present. Um, one of the biggest kind of logistical challenges with this film was um, we couldn't say, "Hey, you know, Kevin, we'd like to film you on your crab boat next Hi, Tuesday," because you? it's all dependent on the weather. Oh, that's right. It's all dependent on the fishing right. season. 
So, so much of what we were doing was determined by the weather and by nature and by the regulations that, um, that have informed uh, when the fishing Well, so how did you do that? Like you're in Santa Cruz, you're half in Bay, are you just, are you, just, are you there for two weeks waiting for we something camped to happen? Out. Oh, yeah, oh, a couple oh, okay. times we camped out and the weather got bad and um, there were a couple instances where uh, I would go down, uh, sleep in the, mini, in the minivan we were using and wake up at 4 a.m. to capture a boat leaving and then we'd drive up the coast and then hop on the boat with the other filmmaker. And it was a little bit crazy in terms of logistics. Um, the other thing, which is uh, plagues all documentary filmmakers, is just funding. Um, we, we raised money and ran out of money about five times oh, really? during the project. Oh so, um, but we had so many amazing uh, sponsors and partners that helped us get here, including the Mendocino Film Festival. Right, really, right. really uh, helped us um, raise the last chunk of money. Oh, that's wonderful. The the shooting is so beautiful. There's so many really beautiful shots. Great. So Thank did you. you did you? I mean, what what did you learn? What did you mm -hmm. come away with in terms of this? I was always a little bit wary of seafood because I knew there were issues with it. Um, but what I really learned, um, the main takeaway for me in terms of how can I make a difference in, in, in terms of in, ensuring the sustainability mm -hmm. of our seafood, um, it's really about supporting local fishermen, paying the price that they need to make a living. Um, and that's really the main reason why most of the seafood, literally that's caught off the um, coast of California, is being shipped abroad is because there isn't a market for it here. And that's up to us. That's yeah, up to people yeah, who consume good. seafood. Instead of buying the farm shrimp from Vietnam, let's buy the Gulf Coast shrimp. Right. Instead of buying the Norway farm-raised salmon, let's buy the king salmon that's caught off the coast. Absolutely, I love it. I love what you're saying. Well, do you see a new kind of uh, commercial fisherman out there? Because your film does some pretty amazing things. It shows the lives of these, of these mm -hmm. workers and mm -hmm. their families. Mm -hmm. What do you notice in this? Um, there is a new, there is an old, older generation of fishermen who were in the heyday of the fishing industry, which is 50s, 60s. Yeah. Started to slow down in the 70s and 80s. And there's a new generation too. So as the older fishermen retire or die or sell their boats or whatever they're, they're doing, um, there is a younger generation that's coming on board. And whether it's they have financial backing from somewhere or they're really scrappy and mm -hmm. bootstrap, um, they're getting their permits and they're figuring out ways to uh, get more for their catch, um, to fish multiple uh, fisheries. Mm -hmm. So if you're just dependent upon one thing, right, uh, right. that can't sustain you. You can't just depend on the salmon fishery. If you have a couple bad years, which we have, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you're, you're out of money. So uh, a lot of people, what you'll see is they'll fish salmon in the summer, they'll fish crab, um, and they'll fish other ground fish, um, ling cod, mm -hmm. they'll do... Mm -hmm. They'll sell whole fish directly at the Asian markets in oh, San Francisco. Okay, okay. And you figure out ways to make more money for their catch and fish more species so that they have a more stable. Um, and, and that's not the fishing of the past. It was more of a commodity. You go, you get your net, you drag the fish, you sell it to the fish buyer, and you're done. But well, more and more people are actually selling direct to restaurants and to Right, consumers. right, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, and it seems to me that there's a... a, a the consciousness where they're looking at sustainability, and I really, I really like how you uh, illustrate that in your film. Yeah, it, right that now. was the other thing that was so uh, encouraging to me is that all of the fishermen that we talked to said, "Of course, we have to care about sustainability because this is this is the thing that sustains mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. and uh, there's nothing." Um, in what we're doing. There's no incentive for us to, to go just uh, fish any right, species right, until right. it's overfished. A lot of times fishermen will go out and seek regulations on the fisheries that they participate in so that they are preserved for the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, we hope you'll come to see Misha's film. It's entertaining, it's valuable, uh, and uh, really it's, a, it's an amazing contribution to film. So thank you, Misha. Yep. All right, buddy. Thank I'm glad you. And we have a local filmmaker here. <laughs> about the hat? The three. Being alone out in the ocean is no problem. I've been doing this for 50 some years.
to be able to handle fishing is to be able to be out there with just you and your crew and your boat somewhere where you know there's no one around to either help or hinder what you're doing. So I was always, from a little kid, fascinated with fishing. I'm always amazed at what we can pull out of the ocean sometimes. Fishing is so restricted that there is a lot less seafood that is coming off of these docks. There are a lot less fishermen these days that can afford to actually fish because of the closures. And you're seeing kind of people like myself and Scott and a lot of the other younger fishermen that have kind of adapted to that. So my hope for the future is that we can leverage technology to increase the efficiencies and streamline the supply chain so that people can buy directly from the fishermen, which currently is almost impossible unless you live right next to a major pier or harbor. On a Wednesday, you know, we'll call fishermen up and see what they're catching. We process it on Mondays, and then it goes out for distribution. In a world that's speeding up, the thing that I think we should all be really cautious of and the thing that we should be paying more attention to is the time that we have with our food. So it's not just about a piece of protein on your plate, but it's about where this fish is coming from and the, and the individuals that brought it to you. There's something romantic about this last source of food that we get from the wild. Our generation has the opportunity to either see the end of commercial fishing for the first time in history, or make sure that there's plenty of fish in the sea for generations to come.